Hi and welcome to Sting McDonald's Arts and Crafts. So today what I thought I would do is I thought I would give you a tour of my studio and show you some of my storage solutions. So we've just gone from out, inside to outside. As you can see, this is my studio. It's not massive and it's just a summer house. And there's um, some flowers I'm pressing at the moment, ready for a video that should be out soon. And uh, this is my garden with my little deaf dog, Lily. She was born deaf, bless her. She follows me around everywhere. Oh, she's so cute. I love it a bit. So we're inside my studio now. And what I'm going to show you is how I work and the storage. So as you can see, it is very packed in here. And I did do a video a while back, probably about eight months ago. And it was nowhere near as packed. They're my recording lights. And that's one of the stems that I use. Because I do all my recordings on my phone. And I sometimes have that for an overhead. Or I use a tripod if I want to use it a little bit more close up. Which is quite useful. And I do use an external microphone. Which is what I'm using at the moment to do this voiceover with. And I do find that they give much better sound than my phone. And... As you can see, I do have everything everywhere. I've got shelves, I've got two workbenches. This workbench I use really for cutting out. I use it for letting stuff to cure on. That's my Wi-Fi box I've just had put in because I'm thinking of doing some live streams. If you'd like me to do some live streams, let me know in the comments by typing in live. And I could also do some question and answer live streams as well. That might be a bit fun. I uh, So I do a lot of cutting out here. I make cards on that side as well. And then I have this big dining room table that I use with my mat on. And there's my clapperboard because I do record in scenes. And I sometimes have trouble tracking where I'm recording. And I always use a silicon mat when I'm using resin. There's my arm protectors as more safety gear. And I have to be really careful because actually I'm very sensitive to resin. And it causes me to come out in a rash if I get it on my skin well before it's cured. Uh, but that doesn't stop me. I am always very, very careful. And I think safety is first. A microwave, because I do some microwave kiln work. And as you can see, there are hooks everywhere. And I find this invaluable. I have my wires hanging from them. I have my lights hanging from them. I hang lots of different things from them, like my sandpapers, scrapers. These are my Dremel tools. Uh, hammers, everything. I, I just use them all the time. I've got these what screws come in and when they're empty I put stuff in them and they're hanging on the side as well. I've got these shelves which I this is where I store the pictures that I've painted or done that I'm not sure what to do with and my card making stuff and that little white box is what I put the silicon jugs in when they've been used and they need to be cleaned and all I do when I need to clean them is turn them inside out, scrape this resin off them and then wash them in the sink of soapy water. Old cabinet there, that was in the shed when we moved in, we got rid of the shed and I kept the cabinet, I think it's about from 1950s. I just buy plastic pots to store stuff in, I use shoe boxes, anything that I think, actually do you know what, I can make use of that and I can store something in it because I like things to be in their place and put away. Those are the tubs that I get our washing powder in and I just give them a wipe out and I use them all the time. They stack really well and they're very robust and uh, they're great for storing stuff in. And then the white ones are what we get our dog fibre in. It's a supplement we give to the dogs to ensure that their bowels work all the time and well. And uh, I use those a lot as well as butter pots there we go they stack lovely as well i've got quite a few of those about and then they don't take up much room but you can get quite a lot in them i do have an extractor fan which i have on all the time but the other really important thing is good lighting as you saw there's a strip light there there's one behind my studio recording light and there's also a large daylight strip light that i have above the door and i use these when i'm working if i'm not recording in here and if I'm recording I just draw these curtains across to stop the light because the sun's in our garden most of the time to stop the light coming in and I have had to write on there turn off mic turn off sockets and take a thumbnail because these are the three things that I forget to do all the time 
minutes. And then I'll come in, try and use the mic, and it's got no charge in it. Ah, oh, there she is again. And I've also got it written on the door. She sits there waiting for me all the time. She knows she's not allowed to come into the studio, but she does sit there waiting for me with her little arms crossed. How cute is she? Bless her, she was born deaf. And what the breeder was going to do was they were going to euthanise her, but I couldn't allow that to happen. I couldn't allow any dog to be put down. Uh, so we took her in and she's learnt sign language and she's the most loving dog. So we're back in the studio again now. And uh, what I did was I had this uh, separately um, fused from the rest of the house. So if anything happens in the rest of the house, I can still come in here and work and vice versa. And as you might have noticed, there are a lot of mirrors about, but I'll talk about that in a second. And this is a magnetic strip that I use to keep my most important Dremel bits on that I use a lot. And also my scissors and a tape measure and some tweezers. And these are some other Dremel bits as well. I use these ever such a lot and I've got more stored in here. I cannot tell you how useful a Dremel is. And I bought the Dremel 4000 because it has an extending arm to it as well. It makes life so much easier. And they're all my glitters, mica powders and whatnot. And these are some of the electrical things that I use. I've got three, uh, four different heat guns there that I use. And I will put the links to some of these items, glue guns, and of course my trusty Dremel hanging there. I don't think there's a day go by where I don't use that Dremel. I even use it for sharpening the lawnmower blades and different bits and pieces, but I love it as an art tool. Honestly, if you need a gift or you want someone to buy you a lovely gift and they're not that expensive, get a Dremel because, oh, they are brilliant. No, no, I'm not on commission by Dremel, by the way. So there's baby wipes. I use those a lot on my torch and I keep a lot of things under my shelves. And what I find I do is because this is my space, if I need a shelf, I just put one up where I need it. And that's the shelf where I keep uh, my resin. And again, as you can see, my mica powders, my translucent pigments. My opaque pigments, there's glitter there, there's glow in the dark pigments. There's reusable, washed out pots that we get desserts in and my silicon jugs. And I would always recommend using silicon to mix your resin in because they're reusable. You can use them all the time and um, they come in lots of different sizes like these little micro ones that I find so useful. And then the really medium ones and then the, these ones here and the larger ones that I keep on this shelf with um, my tape as you can see everywhere's got a hook on it as well and the reason i have so many mirrors about is not because i'm vain it's because actually when i do record i record using my phone and as you can see i'm not vain because if i was vain i wouldn't be recording my hair looking like this um i record using my phone and i use the back camera so i have to have the mirror there for it to show in what I'm actually recording to make sure that I'm in line with the actual camera and what's going on. I find that to be really useful. There's a level that I use to make sure that when I'm doing a pour painting that everything I'm using is level. And my little Bluetooth speaker that I'm sure you've heard turn itself off in many of my videos. There's some notes there and I use um, my, oh, there's my clock. I use it all the time, my steampunk clock and the little chest uh, cold casting I did. I'm doing some more cold casting soon because I'm making some little gnomes out of brass. Um, little tiny gnomes, that's all. There's some paperwork that I keep and the plastic I use to make the pots. Um, you know, it, it's just utilized everywhere. And I get stuff from car boot sales or, or people say, oh, I've got this, is it gonna be any use to you? And I think, yeah, I can use that. And uh, it's great, there's another clock. And this little um, male pigeonhole um, contraption I picked up for nothing. It was given to me and it's brilliant. I keep so much in there. Pipe cleaners, I even use Pringle cans, like stirring sticks. Oh, there's so much in there. And I know, oddly enough, I know where everything is in here as well, which makes a real big difference. There's my clamps attached to the thing that the lights are on over the door. And there's another light that I use when I'm recording from this side of the studio, if I do a recording when I'm standing up, and another bendable arm as well uh, to hold my phone. Some drawers, I've got my paints in, my, all my acrylic painting stuff are in those drawers. So everything that has it's really its own section. There's a big tray that I use 
to keep things clean. Now this is something that I got delivered a plant in a couple of years ago and it's brilliant. It's a box, cardboard box that's lined fully with polystyrene and I use that as a curing box. So if I'm doing a slow cure, uh, that's gonna take three days and I wanna try and keep the temperature consistent, I just pop it in there, put the lid on, leave it and when I come back, it's cured and it's not. there's not been temperature fluctuations either. I also, as you saw there, there's some gloves on the side, there's my radiator, uh, because I try and use my gloves more than once. And these drawers, there's my big shot that I use a lot for cutting out aluminium and making my cards with. There's other projects and tools um, as well going on there. And my safety equipment that I have right beside me because I always wear a mask when I'm going to be heating up resin. And under here uh, is where I keep all my toolbox, my drill, and a gas canister as well, because I do do some torch work with glass and make beads and, and different bits and pieces with that. I do find that this space is really wonderful to work in, that there's more hooks everywhere. And when I bought it, I did have it insulated as well. So there's actually insulation in between the outside and the inside, and that's why there's all this over it so thank you very much hope you've enjoyed this hope you found it useful please let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do some live streaming by hitting like don't forget to join my facebook group facebook group how to resin with steve mcdonald and have fun